If there's one thing I've learned about the Carolina Hurricanes the past few years, is that they really, really trust that their scouting staff and the guys that they draft in these entry drafts are going to be worth it. Let's talk today about Jack Eichel. And no, not because he's getting traded again. Vegas is very happy with this guy. They're going to give him the surgery. Actually, I think at the time of this video's uploading, yeah, the surgery would have already been done, right? Something something Friday along those lines? I'm not too sure. But Jack Eichel is a name that took over the hockey world for the past few months. The former Buffalo Sabres captain had fan bases of every team virtually asking themselves, hey, do we go after this guy? Do we get this Eichel? Do we give him a surgery? Do we do this? Do we do that? And for the most part, I think... The majority of NHL fan bases were like, okay, well, we kind of don't have the cap to do it, and we kind of don't have any reason to do it either. But for the few other NHL teams that actually were like, okay, yeah, we could, we could use a center like Eichel. We could, and we might be able to get a third team involved to facilitate a trade, or we could do this to free up the cap space necessary, whatever, whatever. We had so many teams like that. But when it comes to the primary contenders at the end of the sweepstakes, the last teams we were hearing from included the Calgary Flames, the Anaheim Ducks, and the eventual winning team, Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas got themselves Eichel. Calgary is pretty upset. We're going to make a video about that tomorrow, by the way. Not today, because Calgary is playing tonight. But when it comes to another team that was almost there, sort of in the mix, we have ourselves some word from Pierre Lebrun on NHL Insider Trading talking about the Carolina Hurricanes and the Jack Eichel trade talks. The Canes were the sneaky third team in all of this. What I'm told is Buffalo's conversation had to start with either Seth Jarvis or Martin Nechosh. And believe me when I say this, as part of a package, Carolina was not interested in going down that route. And you know, when everybody talks about their own teams, or excuse me, not talks, talked with a past tense, ED at the end, when everybody spoke about Jack Eichel trade proposals with their own hockey teams in the past few months, there was always this idea of tradable players and untradable players. Untradable players would be like, okay, who is comparable to or better than Eichel? So much to the point that you would not consider this guy in an Eichel trade because you'd be losing. Guys like Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, you could debate like Kale McCarr, maybe Elias Pettersson. Eh, I don't know. Depends who you ask. <laughs> but either way, a lot of other teams had their untradeable players. And for the most part, the common consensus was everybody who was not a star is already automatically a tradable player. So all the prospects you have, unless they are projected to being like Connor McDavid status, which nobody is... All the other guys on your roster that are not at that level yet, but who are also young, maybe also have some talent at the moment, you have so many options to go out there and label as a tradable asset. For Vegas, it was that Peyton Krebs. They initially did not want to depart with him, but they eventually did. You have yourselves on Calgary, guys like Sean Monaghan that were getting involved, maybe Kachuk. He says himself, Kachuk does, that he was not involved in those conversations. And then for other teams, you know, Minnesota has the Marco Rossies and the Beckmans and the Boldies and whatnot. There were so many conversations there. Heck, I kind of contradicted myself. Even with the New York Rangers, there was this idea that maybe a Capo Caco or a Lafreniere could be involved there too, even though these guys are projected to being fantastic NHL talents into the future. Cough, cough, Capo Caco. Man, how many goals does he have on the year this year? But when it comes to the Carolina Hurricanes, this is what I say when I say that they are so gosh darn confident that their guys are going to be good that when I think about Martin Nitschosh, I do not think about a guy that can become as good as Jack Eichel. Like, I'm sorry, Carolina fans. I love Nitschosh. He was a fantastic 12th overall pick in 2017, but that's just kind of how I see him. When it comes to Seth Jarvis, I see another, what was he, 13th overall in 2020. I see another guy who has a really good top six, slippery, offensively minded skill set, but I don't see a Jack Eichel kind of guy. And so... When you say to me that the Carolina Hurricanes had this opportunity where the Buffalo Sabres were like, okay, if you really want to get Eichel, we're talking about Seth Jarvis, we're talking about Martin Nechosh, not even both of them. It's either Seth Jarvis or Martin Nechosh. And Carolina's like, ah, sorry, man, I like Eichel, but Nechosh or Jarvis, you're kind of going off the rails there, man. Like, to me, 
an untradeable piece on the Carolina Hurricanes, I think of Sebastian Ajo. Like, would I rather have Ajo or Eichel on a team if I'm starting out from scratch? That's a debatable question. Andrei Svechnikov, to me, is a piece that you would not depart with in these conversations. I get it, Vincent Trocek is good. I get it, Toivo Taravainen is good as well. But if you're trading for Jack freaking Eichel, of all people, you're giving up somebody of that magnitude. And for the Carolina Hurricanes, who apparently go out there and say Netshosh and Jarvis are no-nos, that, to me, signals just how much fate they have in these players. Now, it's not the first time we've heard similar sentiments coming out of the Carolina sphere in terms of the rumors and whatnot, because when I think about Mark Netshaw, sure, I think about all the skills he possesses. I think of the strange development path he had where he was really good in the NHL, but he just could not get any playing time, and they would be sending him down to the AHL constantly. I think about Patrick Laine. Because when Patrick Laine was getting traded from the Winnipeg Jets a few years ago, what I mean a few years ago, like last year, wasn't it? Yeah, my goodness, time flies when you're having fun, eh? When Patrick Laine was getting traded from the Jets, we had this sentiment going around that the Carolina Hurricanes were in those conversations too. But Winnipeg was asking again for Martin Nitschosh, and the Carolina Hurricanes had a similar response. Okay, look, Patrick Laine is good, but we really like this Nitschosh, man. Sorry, but we're not trading him. And now, the same sentiment is coming out, not just about Nitschosh once more, but about Seth Jarvis as well. Now, if I were to personally define it, I'd say that Jack Eichel is like a number one center on virtually every NHL team, but maybe like four NHL teams. He is a number one center, he's good for 80 plus, 90 points on a good team, and he just does things so effortlessly out there on the ice that you kind of wonder just how was he able to do that. He's like a superhuman out there. And for Netshosh, I see a really good top six ceiling out of him, but I don't see that Eichel level caliber talent. Same with Seth Jarvis. If you go over the profiles right here, Martin Netshosh, 22 years old, 6'2", 190. He's a center right wing player, right handed shot. He's got six points in 11 games so far with the Hurricanes at the time of recording this audio. It's going to be changed up by the time this video is uploaded because we're going to upload it like four days into the future. But even last season, 41 points, 53 games played, half a point a game in the playoffs as well. He is a capable player and he's going to get better as time goes on. He's got so many skills, very competitive. He's a very fast skater as well. He can score some clutch goals when he needs to. Martin Netschosh to me is going to be great, but is he Jack Eichel? I don't know. I don't even know if he's Sebastian Ajo, to be fair. Then you go over onto Seth Jarvis. We had already made a video talking about Seth Jarvis and how he was pretty much the prospect that the Hurricanes bought from the Toronto Maple Leafs because the Maple Leafs traded away Mariner to Carolina with the intention of having Carolina buy out Patrick Marlowe, and it cost the Leafs a first-round pick in the process. That first was given to Carolina, and it was selecting Seth Jarvis out of the WHL, who was a very just offensively slippery and creative guy. He absolutely exploded in his second half of his draft season, finishing off the 2019-20 year with 98 points in 58 games played. Even though he is only 5'10", 181, He's got this strange ability to just keep on holding onto the puck, and it's like a magnet attached to his stick. He can go inside, outside, he can dangle his way through, he can avoid checks. As I said, slippery is like the best way to describe Seth Jarvis, because all this stuff combined for a player that was just so lethal in the offensive zone. And we're seeing that in the NHL. I mean, he's got two points in four games at the time of recording this audio. It's probably higher at the time of this video's uploading as well. But still, do I see a Jack Eichel caliber talent? I don't know. If I was the Carolina Hurricanes GM, if we're talking about a Jack Eichel trade and the Buffalo Sabres are starting with Seth Jarvis, I'm like, okay, well, Seth Jarvis and what? What's the other part that you want to give up? If you try to compare it to the package that the Vegas Golden Knights ultimately had, where it was Krebs, draft picks, and Alex Tuck, I mean, if you keep the draft picks and you say, instead of Peyton Krebs, you put in the Seth Jarvis, and instead of an Alex Tuck, you put in the Tara Vinen instead, like, to me, I'd take that deal. But, obviously, you know, I'm not the biggest Carolina Hurricanes fan, I just kind of peek into the realm of the prospects, see how they're doing, and keep up to date with all the prospects that I find interesting as much as I can. So if you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan and you're defending this idea, yeah, no, they're good. Don Modell is good for not giving up Seth Jarvis or Ned Shosh in an Eichel trade. Please, the comment section is your floor. Go ahead and let me know in the comments why this appears to have been the correct move. However, if you are not a Carolina Hurricanes fan, let me know in the comments also what you think. If you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan and you're like, okay, I 
I would have given up a Nechash for an Eichel. Like, are you kidding me, Don Waddell? Let me know in the comments about that as well. I'm really interested in seeing the fan response to this one. I hope you enjoyed this with Rosh Rolls and I and I. And bye. <laughs>